America, home of the brave, land of the free, and playground to some of the dumbest people on the planet. Packed to the rafters with cretinous criminals, pea-brained policemen, disastrous drivers, and meat-headed morons, you're about to see some of the stupidest America has to offer. They may be big, but they sure ain't clever. This is America's Dumbest. Coming up, we've got hidden camera action from some seriously stupid car thieves. There's a copper who crashes into a parked car. And what do you do if your landlord takes a leak in your leaks? No criminal likes getting caught. It's the biggest thing that stops you being successful in your career. But this fella, I think he's just embarrassed because he's made a giant ass out of himself and there's TV cameras showing his abject humiliation. He had realised that getting into this establishment via the incredibly tall chimney was a bad idea about 50 seconds in. He then had many hours to wonder how he might have avoided this situation. Using a door, perhaps, or even a window, or even giving up this crime thing altogether and getting a proper job. When the rescuers arrived just before someone decided to fire up the boilers, the fella was relieved. But just look at his face. You can't see through all that soot, but he is blushing. Not because he failed in his attempt at burglary, but because he failed in the simple task of not being an utter fool. This is Columbus, Ohio. Such a fascinating place, they followed suit with the other 78 places in America called Columbus. He discovered America. OK, we get it. Anyway, the man in the dock is Jesse Oddie. Jesse is, or rather was, a court clerk responsible for collecting the fines imposed by the court. Jesse committed the bog-standard sin of fools. He had a good thing going and he got greedy. As you can see here, he took a fancy to some of the money handed over to pay the fines. A little bit for the court and a little bit for Jesse, but a little bit quickly built up to nearly 450,000 bucks. Sorry, Jesse, but that's going to get noticed and you're going to see some old colleagues, but not for a reunion. I've been framed! Welcome to the part of the show where we watch the cops set a trap for the criminals and let them stumble brainlessly into it. Cops enjoy nothing more than to set a trap for a crook, and one of the policemen's favourite methods is the bait car. A nice motor fitted with cameras left unlocked with the keys in it, in a nasty part of town. The crims don't stand a chance. There's something ever so pleasing about seeing the smug grin on the faces of these car thieves. Normally, that look would be there as they drove off into the distance, but on this occasion, it's some prize clots enjoying their last few minutes in their fool's paradise. Like any dumb animal, they took the bait. In this case, the bait car. Now they're trapped. They just don't know it. The look on their faces when the police appear and the engine cuts out is pure delight. For anyone who's had their motor boosted, this is for you. <laughs> 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 
still to come. A low IQ landlord can't find the lav. A lady loses her rag with the rosers. Motherfucking guy, she let it get sued. And a robber robs the entire cash till. No one likes being left out of the party, whether you're a geeky swat or a knuckle-dragging simpleton. This cop is in the latter category. He was just taking five minutes at the side of the road, flexing his muscles and flicking the Vs at dweebs when he noticed all his more attentive colleagues whizzing by. He knows he's cooler than those guys, so he piles on the gas, only to get to the front and find that without him, the alpha male, they've gone and lost the bugger. Our copper may be a bit slow, but he can smell fear, and he knows exactly where to go. And there's the suspect, stationary and trout. Now our boy can show him who's boss by shoving him off the road. But he hasn't thought it through. He spun him round and helped him escape. And he knows the ribbing about his lack of brains will continue if he doesn't fix this, so he's after him again. And he's spun him again. God, he's hard. It hasn't worked. This is taking the mickey and it's making him look a damn fool in front of people he knows are jealous of how much he can bench. Off he goes again, but damn it, they've already caught the guy. But it doesn't mean he can't exert his authority. Bang! Take that, parked car. Still desperate to show he can do something other than muscle work, he gets out to do some paperwork, but he suddenly realises the damage he's done. Forms are already filled out, so it's back to the car, but he looks at the damage again, regretting his bonehead actions. He sends his brighter friend to see if it's all that bad, and the report isn't good, so our muscle man wails on him and then blames him for everything. Jock's rule. Landlords, as a rule, aren't very nice people. They own property and it's in their interest to do as little as possible while charging as much as possible. So not necessarily lovely people, but generally not all that stupid. Except, of course, for this guy, who takes stupid to a whole new level. He is deranged. You see, somewhere along the line, the tenants of this flat did something to upset the landlord. We don't know what, but it must have been pretty bad because his retribution was to repeatedly sneak into the place and urinate into their food. And you know what? It serves them right. Never mess with someone who has keys to your flat and a very weak bladder. Everyone has bad days, and when those bad days come along, they separate the men from the boys, and the boys from the girls, and the girls from the nutters. Now, as a lady who has had a really, really bad day, everyone knows there are no limits to how mad you can be. Now he's getting long just there! Hi, hi. Hey, 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 hey. Would you take me along? So it won't be unexpected when you wander miles down a deserted road and scream at passers-by. Unless, of course, they're cops, in which case, shush. Because they'll arrest you for being crazy and chuck you in the back of the cruiser. Just a few more words should do it. And there you go. The important thing to remember about successfully being a bad-tempered lady is that you have to know when to you shut up. Fucking die. Die. Get like now, for example. 
Okay, so you better run! Okay, how about now? Your Michael Jackson ass! That's your entirety hell, bitch! No, okay. Take her to jail then, and that's exactly what they do. Fuck around! You gave me so many motherfucking nags, you traitor! No one has any patience for people who take things too far. Still to come. Stealing from a store proves tricky for this chap. Cops manage to fence in this fleeing felon. And getaway cars turn into bumper cars in this botched burglary. Coming up, this burglar chooses to drive into the fence rather than sitting on it. American footballer Ruben Drones has been droning at cops. And for this janitor, a cheeky line gets a hefty fine. There are quite a few things that you tend to notice when you watch a lot of incompetent criminals taking on equally befuddled shop assistants. Firstly, the assailant disguises themselves as a genuine customer. Note the beer. Don't know about you, but I'm fooled. Now it's the assistant's turn. Oh, this till, it's just so confusing. I mean, it's the only thing I use every day when I'm at work, but now I might be in danger. I don't know how to open it. I'll be darned if I can remember what to do. Stage three is interesting because it involves the criminal making threats they don't seem that convinced they can carry out. All right, come on now. I ain't kidding. Get the fucking money out. I'm gonna hurt you if you don't. I'm serious. I ain't fucking playing. I don't want to hurt you. It ain't worth your fucking life. Come on! Especially as the only thing this lad seems to have in his pants is his tackle. And the assistant isn't sure how threatened to be. First, the shopkeeper decides that the way to open the till and end this thing is to ignore what's worked on the previous four or five thousand occasions and instead just press buttons randomly. Hey, something's bound to work. Unsurprisingly, this angers the bad guy even more and, using both his brain cells in tandem, decides he's a better random key hitter than his dim-witted victim. So, stalemate. This could go one of two ways. If we had a brave assistant and a cowardly robber, the assistant could take charge and see him away. But it went the second way. Our cowardly Ficky invites the thief to take the till with him, which, after a struggle, he duly does, not forgetting to disguise it slightly with his jacket. No one would ever guess anything was amiss. Now, if you're the cynical type, you might say that the copper in this car is chasing the police car in front and he, in turn, is just following the car in front of him. They could just be off to get a pizza. Maybe they're just following the bright flashing lights because they're like babies or magpies drawn to pretty things and shiny objects. Perhaps they're on the donut run, hence the high speed. Well, viewers, you're all wrong, and to be honest, I'm disgusted at your lack of faith. In fact, they're on urgent police business, chasing fools who've committed an undisclosed crime and are on the run from the cops in a high-speed getaway car. And by high speed, we mean that the teenagers are driving this thing that is no longer really a car. They'd be doing themselves a lot of favours if they accepted defeat gracefully in a vehicle that no longer has wheels or even suspension. But no, because that would demand a level of intelligence that just won't get you on to America's dumbest. Naturally, they crash almost immediately and fail miserably in their attempts to run away. Hampered by years of neglecting their studies, they don't know which direction away is, so they run straight into the arms of the cops.
Welcome to the Miami Beach Trolley Dash, where we give 15 miscreants one whole minute to loot this store of whatever they want. In fact, it's a group of teens who have arrived in three cars and broken into a department store in the dead of night. It's a highly organized raid. You can see some of the looters coming in and out several times, loading up the cars with the best the department store has to offer. Outside, the three getaway cars are left running, and at the front gate of the complex, there's another car keeping watch. But the CCTV is manned by a security guard, and the police have been called. As soon as the lookout car reports he's seen the cops, the careful choreography gets canned in favour of a demolition derby approach to running away. So while they're busy removing each other's doors, the cops are closing in. Eventually the dust settled and they realised they'd been nicked. Eight of them were arrested at the scene and the other seven were caught at maths class. And it was all going so well. Still to come, janitors get caught using the wrong type of powder and a copper gets caught being a naughty shopper. America's Dumbest Drivers Cops thought this was going to be just like every other evening. Arresting someone for DUI, talking down their noses at him, maybe even giving him a bit of a kicking. Whatever. But tonight, unexpectedly, they have a celebrity on their hands. This is Ruben Drones, American footballer, running back for the Cleveland Browns and highly successful complete idiot. How much is alcohol you can I'm having here he's being arrested for driving under the influence, failing first a sobriety test and then a breathalyzer. Thousands of people are convicted of drink driving every year. For some, it's a genuine mistake. Others, it's because of a sickness. And for some, like Reuben, it really could and should have been avoided. His playing contract is worth $30 million. This guy can hire people to drive for him. He can hire people to drink for him. Hell, he can hire people to drink drive for him and still remain untouched by the law. He's probably got enough money to hire the road and get it closed off to the public, made into a private road for the evening and drive along it as pissed as he likes. Count out loud for me. 1,001. 1,002. 1,003. But what he actually chooses is to take a chance, see if he can get away with driving without getting caught or killing small children. Surprise, surprise, he doesn't manage it. And here he is in all his football glory getting carted off to jail. 24-48, hut hut. Where's he gone? Oh, that's right, he's in jail. Good work, buddy. There are interesting rules about being a cop in America. You are allowed, for example, to work as a security guard in your free time. You're also, it would seem, allowed to have the mental capacity of a loaf of bread. The guy in this shot is a policeman and he's a security guard at a top department store. He's doing okay in the law enforcement arena, except for when he gets caught stealing from the shop he works at. Now that's a schoolboy error and it's going to cost you both your jobs because the careers you've chosen are quite big on the whole not stealing front.
Internal Affairs is a rubbish Richard Gere film and a branch of the police set up to watch their own. The police's police, if you like. At this station in Florida, they were busy spending taxpayers' money trying to catch some fiend who had been stealing coffee from the station. Coffee, damn it. Instead, what they found was a very internal affair. These two randy fools are colleagues on the force, a detective and a dispatcher. And knowing what they know about police, you'd think she, for one, wouldn't want to blow it. But blow it, she did. And in spite of this frisky on-the-job training, they face serious admonishment. We don't condone, and uh, so we have to take action. Uh, we didn't make them do it, they did it on their own. The lesson of this sorry tale, if you work with people whose job is to figure things out or detect things, then you might want to take a little more care over your affairs, or a desk job could be all you've got. Although this clip is a piece of time-lapse film, you might notice that the gentlemen in it barely move. They've got lazy down to a fine art. These guys are New York City school janitors, and they're being secretly filmed because their bosses suspect them of doing drugs on the job. I know what you're thinking. I'm already a step ahead of you. No, they're not taking Valium or any other drug that might explain their lethargy. No, as you see here, they're doing cocaine, which is, ironically, a stimulant. Makes you wonder if they'd even be conscious without it. Taking drugs at work is daft. When you work at a school, it's dumb. And when, in spite of the drugs, you still do next to nothing, it makes you one of America's dumbest. And now it's time to choose the lowest IQ of the lot. Who's in the running? We saw a bonehead burglar get stuck fast in a chimney. There was a bait car hoodlum who thought he'd struck gold. And we saw a fleeing felon get run ragged and forced into a fence. But the stupidest of them all, the king of all morons, has to be the landlord who let himself into his rented flat and took a tinkle in the Tupperware. Congratulations, you are America's dumbest.